So another massive week is over and done with, and the hardcore season has officially ended for the time being, and we have a massive change. At the top of the rankings on the men's, and also within the women's ranking, but also the finals race is starting to take a little bit of shape as well. Let's go have a look at who won last week. Two tournaments, both in Miami. All right, so having a look at the players last week who won the Miami Open, starting with the WTA, with Petra Kvitova taking out Alina Rabakina in straight sets, 7-6-6-2, and denying Rabakina a chance at that sunshine double. And over on the men's side, Daniel Medvedev, Beating Yannick Sinner 7 5 6 3 to rise back up the ranks as well and win his first Miami Open, another big trophy. And he's won four out of his last five events, Medvedev, including a final where he lost to Alcaraz last week. So Medvedev in such great form, and they're the champions. Now let's go have a look at who has gone up in the rankings after the Miami Open on both the WTA and the ATP that are outside the top 10. Starting with Hashinov, he's gone up five spots to number 11 in the world, just outside the top 10. And he has been in the top 10 before. So Hashinov having a very good couple of weeks, of course, made the semi-final for the Australian Open as well, so that helped him. Also, Treveson, who was a bit of a surprise making the quarterfinals. She goes up four spots into the top 20 for the first time. And Potapova, she goes up four spots to number 22 in the world. Career high for her as well. So, a couple of players there outside the top 10 that had really good weeks this week and got rewarded with some career high rankings. Some of the players that went down to the rankings this week after losing points from last year's Miami Open. Kecmanovic, he drops down five spots to number 40 in the world after last year's quarterfinal. Points dropping off. Daniel Collins also went down 10 spots to number 40 on the WTA after last year making a quarterfinal here as well, just like Kajmenovic, and failing to do so this year. But the big one was Naomi Osaka. She drops down 245 spots to outside of the top 300 after dropping the finals points from last year. And of course, she's not going to play for the rest of the year. So she'll come into the new season in 2024 after she's had her baby pretty much unranked. But at the moment, she is down 245 five spots, which is crazy. So they're the players that have gone up and down in the rankings this week. All right, let's have a look at the WTA now in the top 10 for the WTA. No real changes. With Fiontech staying at number one despite not playing in Miami and losing a thousand points. Sabalenka stays at two. Pagula at three. Garcia at four with Jabir at number five. Goff comes in at number six with Rabakina just behind at number seven. Kazakina at number eight. But we do have a change down the bottom. With Belinda Bencic dropping down two spots outside the top ten. Allowing Sakri to go up one spot to number nine. And Petra Gavidova, after winning Miami, is back into the top ten. Two spots higher than last week into that number ten spot. So, not too many changes in the rankings, but the point situation has changed a lot because, of course, there was a a lot of points to gain and to lose for some players in Miami. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and this is where things do get very interesting. Sabalenka keeps her number one spot, with Rabakina staying at two. But Pagula, she goes up to number three, pushing Sviantec down number four, after having a good Miami Open, making the semifinals while Sviantec was absent. And Kvitova comes up to number five in the race of the finals, 13 spots higher than last week after that Miami win. So a huge boost in her points. Rodrigova stays at number six. Benchich drops down to number seven. Goff also drops down one spot to number eight. Azarenka drops down to number nine. And Magda Lynette rounds out the top 10 again this week with Garcia falling out of the top 10 completely for the race of the finals. So thanks to that win, Kvitova jumps so high up the rankings. Over the ATP now, and we have a massive change at the very top. We knew Alcaraz had to win Miami to stay number one, and he couldn't do it. Djokovic back up to number one in the world, even though he didn't play, which is absolutely crazy. Alcaraz goes down to number two after dropping all those points he won in Miami last year. Tsitsipas stays at number three, but Daniel Medvedev, he goes up into the top four for the first time in a while, pushing Rude down to number five, who, of course, made the Miami final last year and couldn't defend those points. Also, a little bit of a change in the middle with FAA dropping down to number seven, making way for Rublev. Those guys are always neck and neck on the points. Runa stays in at number eight. And Yannick Sinner, he gets back into the top ten with that final in Miami, two spots higher than last week, into that number nine spot. Fritz stays at number ten, and Hubi Hercatch, he has dropped out of the top ten completely this week. So, some interesting changes this week. It's very close. If you can see there on the points, very close between a lot of players. So there might be a lot of one and two movements. Maybe not too many five spot movements over the next few weeks, but there are little changes that are happening week to week because the points are so close between some key players. All right, let's go have a look at the ATP Finals race now, and things are starting to look really interesting. Daniel Medvedev, he is now the number one player in the race of the finals with that Miami win, taking Djokovic over 
pushing him down to number two. Algris stays at number three. And Yannick Sinner, he goes into the top four at number four. Three spots higher than last week, pushing Sidzi Bass down to number five. Fritz also gets a boost going up to number six. Two spots higher than last week, pushing down Paul to number seven. Norris dropped down to number eight. Three spots lower than last week after not playing well in Miami. Ashnov, he jumps up to number nine after a very good Miami Open. Tiafa also into the top 10, pushing Alex Dimonor down to number 11, two spots lower than last week. So some big changes to the ATP Finals race. And remember, this rounds out the hardcore season part one. So the first three months of the hardcore season, this is what it looks like in Medvedev, the hardcore king. So there you have it. They are the rankings for this week. No major changes. We all knew that Alcaraz would have to win Miami to stay number one, which was always going to be a tough ask. But uh, Djokovic back to number one again, going into the clay court season, which I think is what everyone expects. You know, Djokovic is the best player on the planet when he can play. But not too many changes on the WTA. Only the changes really coming from the finals races, which are coming up even bigger now. Because, of course, with the clay court season coming up, we don't have any more hardcore tennis until August. It's going to be interesting to see how some of these players keep their spot in the finals race. I'm looking at guys like Medvedev, who don't necessarily like playing on clay, but... Let me know down in the comments below. How do you like the rankings this week? Do you see any massive changes? Are you a bit shocked at who's maybe not there? Of course, Rafa is not in the top 10, which is always weird to see. Well, we haven't seen it, have we, for near on 20 years. So Rafa's going to come back hopefully soon. Maybe get back in that top 10. But let me know down in the comments below. What's shocked you most this week in the rankings?